Last week at Minecraft Live, we learned all about 1.17 and the new features that we are getting. One of those new features is the Skulk Sensor, which I have in my hand. So today, we're going to take a look at this thing, see how it works, what it can do, what it can't, what the limitations are, and yeah, have a bit of fun. So if you want to see what this can do, then stick around. And there it is, the Skulk Sensor in the world, ready to use and uh, yeah, and play with. And you can see I've got it, got it in my inventory as well. So before we get into this, I should say that this obviously isn't isn't uh, the real implementation from Mojang. Um, uh, the snapshots haven't started yet, but this is a mod. This is a mod that's been created by a wonderful developer, a wonderful person called Opisec, and uh, there'll be a link to his channel in the description. And I highly recommend you go and check it out. And I'll give you some more details about that in a second. But he is the author of this uh, this Forge mod. Uh, it's not public available just yet. He's given me. A sneak preview so I could have a play around with it but he will be releasing it very soon and so if you want to find out when that's going to be then hop on over to his channel subscribe to him he's going to release a video soon I think uh, detailing how you can get hold of this thing for yourself try it out and how you can install it all that kind of good stuff so thank you so much Opisec for uh, for sharing this with me that's really cool of you and yeah let's get into this shall we so here it is this is this is the this is the Skulk Sensor, and I've been playing around with this, not in a like very organised fashion. You can see I've just been doing a whole bunch of stuff around this world. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about this. So for those that haven't seen uh, Minecraft Live, that was uh, last weekend, uh, as I record this video, this is a new block in the game called the Skulk Sensor. And what can it do? Well, it can detect various things. So one thing it can detect is noise. So you heard that? If I place a block here, you heard that. And you can see as I place the block, these kind of particles come out to it and uh, come out from the block I place and go to this sensor. This sensor can basically detect sound. So that's placing blocks down and breaking blocks. And if I walk around here, it uh, detects me and it makes that noise. So, and you can see these kind of particles coming out, coming out from me. Uh, so that's, <laughs> so it's basically detect, uh, detecting uh, a bunch of things. Basically, basically sound in the game. Now, if I was to uh, place a redstone uh, a block behind it, so it made that noise, and it kind of changes, see how it changes its texture uh, when it detects new things. Uh, so that's, that's telling you that it's working, but it also lets out a redstone signal. So if I was to place a block over here, for example, it detects it and the, the and the, the lamp behind it comes on. So that is the, the basic premise of this, but we're going to do some more experimentation. We're going to see exactly what we can do with this thing, what we can't, and yeah, see how useful it's going to be. And I think uh, some of this stuff is going to be quite cool. So let's, uh, yeah, where, where should we start? Well, let's start, I guess, I guess let's start over here. So first of all, let's talk about timings. So when you place a block down, um, the sound has to travel from the block to the skulk sensor. So there's a time there and it's gonna take longer depending on how far away it is. And then the, the skulk sensor then activates for two seconds. Uh, yeah, and that, that, that's how long it emits a redstone signal. So if I was to place a block here, you can see that probably pretty pretty immediately, um, this light comes on and then stays on for two seconds. Now, if that, if that delay is too long, like if you want a signal that's less than that, you can actually use an observer. So if you point an observer into this thing, it will detect the change of state of that. So if I was to move this block now, it auto detects that and you can see now you get a quick pulse there when it detects it and then a second one uh, when it turns off. So that's when the, uh, you see this texture kind of changes. So if we look at that again, you see it comes on and then it comes off. So that's uh, that's the basic timings. <laughs> so there, that's uh, that's uh, that kind of the first thing. The second thing is what uh, what sides of the block gets powered. Um, so of course I should say before we carry on that all of this is down to this implementation of this mod. Now we don't know if this is how it's actually going to ha work uh, when 1.17 is actually released or when we get to snapshots, but this is just our interpretation of uh, how this works based on what we saw at Minecraft uh, Live last weekend. So here inside here, I've got a skulk sensor. So if I surround it in uh, in blocks you can see there that uh, it uh, it will it will uh, power all of the blocks around the side and the bottom but not the top so if I place a block down here you can see all of those lamps around it and the bottom come on but the one on the top doesn't and that that makes sense you know it's a block it's a half a it's not a full block so it makes sense that the top uh, doesn't get powered uh, so that would all yeah that will kind of make sense so over here what else can we do with it well let's see can we push it with a piston let's see if this works no, we can't push it with a piston. That doesn't work. That's like, okay. What about slime? Does it stick to slime? So if we wanted to move it around, could we do it this way? No, it, uh, it just uh, kind of, the, the slime slides just like that. And you can see those particles coming across. <laughs> That's really cool. Now, the other thing I want to try out here is, does it blow up? <laughs> so let's see, does it, does it survive an explosion? Ooh. Well, 
No, it, it gets destroyed. Okay, so that's cool. That is cool. And the other thing here is, does it transmit uh, redstone power? So let's uh, put a power through it. And you can see here that redstone doesn't go through. Again, that, that makes sense. It's not a full block. Um, so that, that makes all, all kinds of sense. All right, so that's some, some very basic tests there. But let's get on to some more interesting things. So first of all, let's look at this thing I've made, which is the range of this skulk sensor. So here we have a skulk sensor and what I've done here is I've traced out the range uh, that sound can be detected and it's basically a sphere with a radius of five blocks. So if you see we've got the the, uh, the sensor just there, we've got one, two, three, four, five out to here and I traced all this out making sure that uh, it all worked. So if I was to put a block outside of this sphere for example, so if I want to put one here then it doesn't activate, you see the light doesn't come on so it's not detecting any sound there but if we go inside the sphere like here for example you can see it comes on, there's the lamp coming on and again, turn it off. You can see, you see the kind of uh, the, the sound waves traveling towards the sensor. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, I think this mod has been implemented very well indeed. That's uh, that is really cool. Now, the other thing, of course, here is that it's not just about placing blocks. This detects basically any sound that uh, that is within that is within range. So it can detect a player. So if I start walking around, there you go. It detects me, and there is the there is the signal. And the other thing it can detect is other mobs in the game, not just not just players. Um, it can detect other mobs. So let's grab ourselves let's grab ourselves a mob so let's grab a pig just for you know because why not and let's just case him in here next to it so if i if i just stand still here and don't make any noise uh shortly the pig will uh oink <laughs> and when it does there it goes he oinked <laughs> and you can see i've added the uh, i've added the subtitles down there on the bottom right hand corner so you can see as well when he oinks there it goes <laughs> and the redstone comes on so that could be useful for some for some some things yeah if you wanted to have like i'm thinking like a random uh, some kind of random generator random noise ra random signal coming out you can just rely on these uh, these mobs now um one of the things with this is obviously it detects players um so we did have or we do have um, a way to do that in the game at the moment using using pufferfish a pufferfish detector play detector but the range of that is actually quite small so it's actually smaller than the range of this so one advantage of this is it's got a bigger range but even that isn't that big but there is a way um, to make the range this big I've discovered so let me show you how it works so basically if I come over to here and I come over to the red block if we stand here as I talk that uh, the redstone lamp will not come on and that is because uh, for mobs in the game they will not make a noise they will not make any kind of sounds unless you're within 16 blocks of that mob so we could have a longer range play detector by having a skulk sensor having some kind of mob next to it that makes a noise and uh, yeah once you once you come within a range of 16 blocks then it can detect it now obviously there's going to be a delay because the mob uh, doesn't uh, oink all the time. <laughs> you know, pigs are not constantly oinking. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. But anyway, if I uh, come into the glass here, if I come on one more block onto this one and just look over there any second now, he, there he goes, he did it. <laughs> so he detected me and I am 16 blocks away. So that is one way that we can use a mob plus a skulk sensor to extend the range of this. So that could have some other applications. You know, if you want to have like an early warning system in your base that uh, some someone or something is approaching, then uh, yeah, <laughs> that might be that might be one way to do it. All right, so what should we do next? Let's uh, uh, Let's check this thing out. So what we've got here is a way to detect a player without any kind of redstone. So of course there's no there's no pressure plates or or string with observers or anything like that. It's just a totally open. So this um, so what this does do is it allows us to be a bit more precise uh, when it comes to detecting where players are, and uh, means that our builds can be a lot cleaner without having kind of exposed uh, redstone components. So what we've got here is just an armor equipper. So if we look at me, look at my handsome body. <laughs> well, I don't have any clothes on uh, right now, but uh, what I've done here is I've placed the skulk sensor uh, just the right number of blocks away. Way. so only when I'm inside this block here will the skulk sensor detect me so if I if I come over here now if I'm walking around here nothing happens you can see in the bottom right hand corner I'm, I'm producing footsteps and um, so I'm producing noise but if I come into here you can see that uh, there we go it activated and if, when I come out and look at me now I'm all decked out yes <laughs> so that, that works so not sure so with a lot of these things that I'm doing I'm not sure of the actual practical applications but I'm just trying to play around with a few different ideas just to see what kind of things are possible now what I would like to do maybe in the future is do make a, maybe another video so if you've got any ideas if any of this sparks some ideas then stick it in the comments and maybe I can make a follow-up video uh, doing some experimentation with the ideas from the viewers
The next thing to talk about is wool and soundproofing. So over here we have another skulk sensor and you've got, you can see this is a, oh there we go, I'll trigger it. <laughs> you can see it's wired up with a repeater with a bit of a delay that goes into this piston. Now as you saw there, if I place a block over here, oh <laughs> I moved, <laughs> I keep setting it off. So if I place a block here you can see that, uh, that it takes time for the for the sound waves to reach, to reach it but then it activates and then the piston, the piston comes out. Now that piston will also make noise but what we've got here we've got a wall block in between, in between the piston and the skulk sensor so that uh, that soaks up the sound if you like so that means that uh, the piston moving doesn't affect uh, the skulk sensor but if we remove the wall and then <laughs> activate it we then end up with a clock because uh, the skulk sensor de detects a noise uh, 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 fires the piston the piston makes a noise and then as you can see it kind of goes into this loop so this is one one way to make a clock not sure this is the, <laughs> the best way of uh, actually making clocks there are, we've got other ways of doing that but just sh shows you you can do that if you wanted to and you can place down wall now when you place down wall that doesn't make any kind of noise so you can place this around all you like that won't activate the skulk sensor um, and this uh, that is a way to isolate sound so if you wanted to only detect sounds on one side of it so let's say let's say uh, let's say this is your base for example and uh, you inside it you don't want to trigger any kind of devices so you can line your walls with uh, with wool and so uh, noise that you make won't reach it but uh, any noise from the outside will and then that can uh, that can set off your early warning detection just like that <laughs> so that is uh, that is something that is a nice a nice addition uh, to that All right so what else maybe yeah let's go over here so the next thing I wanted to test is, is this going to be useful for any kind of other things like uh, like if a crop was to grow? So over here I've got a pumpkin and yeah I wanted to see where if, if it was to grow in front of the piston does it generate a sound? I don't think it does but, but irrespective of that does the block just being uh, just appearing in the world does it affect the skulk sensor? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up the game so if we do a game rule uh, random tick speed if we uh, really bump that up pretty quickly hopefully the uh, there it goes it, it grew but no there we go no uh, no nothing happened so yeah we can't use this in this kind of situation uh, for yeah automatic block breaking in that kind of that kind of sense i mean obviously we've got uh, solutions for that now but <laughs> it, it does if i uh, make a noise all right so that was uh, that was something worth uh, worth looking at but then let's have a look at this other thing the next thing i guess on the list is this thing the wireless redstone so as you can see at the bottom here, we have our skulk sensor with a trapdoor next to it. So when this uh, skulk sensor uh, detects some vibration, uh, this uh, this trapdoor will move, and of course that will make some noise. That noise will travel up and hit this skulk sensor, which will then do the same thing. It will it will uh, activate this trapdoor, which will then go up again, and it will actually pass through this, these solid blocks and go into this one. So we're going to have this chain, this kind of chain reaction, all the way up to the top. Now we've got these uh, wall blocks here. That's to make sure that the the when this trapdoor moves, it doesn't send a signal down again to this one and end up giving us some kind of infinite loop of uh, of vibration. So uh, yeah, let's see if this thing works. And right at the very top, we've got a dispenser there that's got some uh, that's got some fireworks in it so if we go over to this it activates you can see it goes up travels all the way through the system and there we go there are the rockets that come out at the top so yeah it uh, it works it's pretty cool now i'm just thinking practically how useful this is going to be i'm sure there will be uses for this um, but it would be better if this range was a bit a bit bigger um i think that's kind of, of like a balancing act because if the range of this is too big it'll get set off it, you know, far too often by all sorts of things that make noise. Um, so that's understandable, but this kind of like, uh, this kind of a wireless redstone, if you want to have some kind of control down here that activates something all the way up here, you still have to have quite a lot of these in between because the range is only five blocks. But uh, yeah, I mean, it works. There is, uh, you know, there's uh, there's nothing in between. I can kind of walk in between here. There's no kind of magic. I feel like a magician. <laughs> and also, as we've seen there, uh, the sound waves do go through uh, solid blocks. It's only the wall there that stops, the, stops those vibrations. All right, so that is pretty cool. So the other thing is, oh yeah, over here, let's check out these, uh, these little pigs. We've got another oinker over here let's see what he's up to so before we look at this pig in a minecart we've got another pig another little piggy over here now this is a kind of like a, an implementation almost of the of the random the random uh, timer that i kind of spoke about earlier so here we've got a pig just in this in this uh, little uh, little hole here with a skull sensor next to it and then what we, what we would actually do is we would surround all of this uh, in wool so no other sounds uh, could get in here and uh, yeah, if you were to do that all the way around, just to make sure there's no kind of interference. Um, but then this this will just give you a random a random signal. Now this would only work if you're within 16 blocks of the of the little piggy. So uh, as you can see, it goes off relatively frequently. So if that's the kind of like a random timer that you want, uh, it's a nice and easy way to do it. Uh, so that's one option. Uh, but there's another option down here. Now if we come down here and listen, you can hear that the minecart actually does make noise. There you go. As it goes around. 
but that doesn't that doesn't give us any kind of uh, noise in our in our. If you look down on the the, the bottom right, uh, we don't get any noise uh, coming through on the subtitles. And as you can see, the skulk sensor doesn't pick up any noise of the minecart. So minecarts going past this thing won't deter, won't set it off. But the little piggy in there will make a noise. But if, because he's in this loop, he's only in range for a certain period of time. And so this is another way to get a longer, uh, you know, a kind of a, ra you know, a random um, a, 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 a random signal that comes out of this. But it will be less frequent because he's only going to do it when he's in range of, uh, of that. So it's kind of like a fun way to create a random timer. <laughs> and you can you can experiment you know, around with the length of this maybe to uh, get, get these uh, random things to happen further and further apart. But as you can see, yeah, he's, he's oinking all the time. But only if he's in range, there we go, <laughs> and he then sets it off. So that's kind of a fun way to do some stuff there. I thought that was pretty cool. But I guess the thing you're really interested in is what can we do with this thing in terms of our base, in terms of security, and also in terms of some shenanigans. All right, I've got a few things over here, so let's check it out. So here we have a chest, a nice innocent looking chest. There's no blocks around it. There's no, no kind of contraption here. This is totally safe and it's not a trap chest. So what could go wrong? What could happen if you open this chest? Well, let's uh, let's go up to it and let's not stand on any suspiciously placed sand. Uh, that would, uh, obviously that would be, that would be dangerous. But let's look in this chest. What, what, what happens? Oh, we fall to our doom into some lava. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, oh, I need to place a block up here to set it off again. No, I need to break that block. There we go. <laughs> so as you can see here, we've got, uh, let me show you what we've got. So underneath here, we've got a skull sensor just out, just over here at the right range um, away from where the player is. So the player walking around over here doesn't set it off. He's too far away. Even standing on the block here, uh, you're, you're still too far away. You won't set it off. But uh, any noise uh, over here, like the chest, so the chest will make a noise and we can probably see the, the particles. Oh, there we go. Just sorry if I, if I do that. But there you go. You saw the particles there. That sets it off. And of course, that uh, releases the piston, which means the sand uh, falls down and then we can uh, we, we end up in the lava underneath. So a little trap there. You can have a trap chest with no, no nothing visible. Obviously, you could have all sorts of blocks here. You could uh, decorate this however you like. And that would be a pretty cool way to, uh, you know, trap your friends. Next up, let's look at some base security. So before we go over and show you the next demo, uh, let me just demonstrate one other thing. So if I walk around here, you can see that uh, it, it triggers that, that skulk sensor. So we've seen it already, we know that. But if I was to shift and sneak around, I don't make any noise. And yeah, it doesn't set this thing off. So that's something you can't do um, with a, with a pufferfish detector. That will always that will always trigger whether you're whether you're shifted or not. So this could be useful. So this could be a way for you to get past your security if because you know it's there. But other people that just walk around will uh, will set it off. So let's go over here now. Here we have a very innocent looking hill. There is nothing strange about this. But I could just walk up here and let's jump over here. And we got a door that opens without any kind of redstone visible, and it will open on the way out as well. So there we go a uh, totally hidden <laughs> totally hidden entrance uh, to our, our secret base so let's let's uh, hop on in again and uh, yeah let me just show you underneath pretty straightforward stuff we've got a skulk sensor just there underneath and that leads some redstone into the torch which then controls these pistons uh, on either side so yeah pretty pretty cool stuff let's place that back just so uh, that's all done now the other thing is obviously we need some security so let's say that somebody was to breach was to breach the front door now obviously we know that there might be some uh, some things here to deal with so we're going to just sneak around so if i do this if i sneak i can sneak all the way through here and this is no problem at all quite happy to do this and over here there we go here is the door to our top secret base that is that is a, that is the thing that we need to secure. Now, imagine I was an intruder and I didn't know the layout of this base. I didn't know what security systems we had, and I just came walking in around, you know, like uh, you know, like like you kind of would. So let's say I'm over here and I'm going to just walk around here, and as you can see, I fall into the lava. <laughs> so we can have a lava trap here, and I'm now stuck. I can't get out. But uh, yeah, if I just make a noise, then it does. So what I've got here on this case is I've got a skulk sensor just above here, so that detects the noise, and of course it sends a redstone signal down here into a torch and just under here we've got some pistons there's two pistons just there that open and close <laughs> whenever i set it off so that is uh, that is pretty cool same on the other side as well so there's a couple of ways to uh, you know secure your base and make sure um, no one comes in and steals your stuff as admiral akbar would say it's a trap well, it's not a trap just yet. It's not been set up, but I thought I'd show you how to do this. So here we have, uh, there's a block here that uh, you might not want to walk near, but uh, it's not set up yet. 
but I've got it all rigged up here. So if we come down this hole and come back, we're just underneath underneath the hole there, underneath the sign, the signs on that block right there. And as you can see, we've got uh, some TNT there. Now you need to be careful with this because if you were to place the skulk sensor first and then start placing the TNT, that would set it off. So you need to be super careful if you're going to do this kind of trap, but we can uh, place our skulk sensor next to that. Now we need to shift. We don't want to set it off uh, prematurely. So we can now shift. And then once we've got over here, we're then out of range and we are, should be good here. So now we can obviously get some ladders here, whatnot, and fly up. Then let's cover this over. Now that's uh, that sign is now fully rigged. So imagine you're an unsuspecting person kind of walking around, you know, just mind your own business. Oh, and you can hear it going off. Uh, and then kaboom. <laughs> so that is pretty cool. Another way to, uh, you know, surprise your friends. What do we have here? It's a disco floor, an automatic disco floor. This is pretty cool. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of fun. So as you can see, as I walk around here, there's a whole bunch of Scott sensors underneath, and that is ac activating all of the redstone above. Now, how did we do that? Well, pretty simple to uh, to show. We've got uh, a layer of Scott sensors all the way along here, and then a bunch of observers uh, watching those Scott sensors. So whenever they detect noise, they then give out a signal to uh, the red <laughs> redstone, uh, redstone uh, lamps above. So that's a cool little effect. That's something that uh, Opisek had in his video uh, where he showed off this mod as well. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, so I thought I'd give it a try. And yeah, that is pretty nice. Now over here, got something else. So um, the other thing I was interested in is what can we do with maybe flying machines? So sometimes when you've got a flying machine, um, you want to detect it when it's moving backwards and forwards. Now we can do that with uh, with these skulk sensors as long as the, the pistons that are close enough uh, are close enough to them to detect. Now there's ways of detecting this already. So for example, let's uh, let's just set this one off. So we've got the flying machine going across and as it as it passes through that observer we can detect it but also as it passes uh, this um <laughs> this skulk sensor here you can see that uh, that gets activated because the pistons are close enough to it now on this side of on this side of things uh, there's another way of doing it you can have a you can have an, an observer on the flying machine itself and then that can activate something uh, if you want to detect when your flying machine goes past something so that, that can be useful um sometimes you can't put observers there if you if you if you've run out of blocks uh, if you've if you've breached the 12 block limit um so so that will be useful but also i just put here as well skulk sensor that won't detect any noise here because there's no there's no moving blocks that are, that are creating noise so this one doesn't get uh, doesn't get activated but one thing here that i've found which could be useful i'm not sure about this but as you can see here we're using a skulk sensor to make the flying machine automatically return so we've just got the skulk sensor with the trapdoor on it when the flying machine gets to it the, it sets off the sound and that uh, that triggers the um, the, the, the trapdoor which is on top of these observers so it's an auto returning uh, fly machine using a skulk sensor now why is this better well I'm not sure if it's better or not but one application here is that if you have a fly machine moving backwards or forwards and you leave the area it's quite often that these things break when they get unloaded now this one will automatically turn off because this will only work when you're when you're the player is close enough uh, for the for the blocks to make a sound. So if uh, we make sure it's going going along now, if I move away from it all the way over here and just just zoom in, yeah, hopefully it should just stop. There we go. It just stopped automatically because I wasn't close enough to it. So this could be a way maybe um, to make fire machines automatically stop uh, when you're not in range of uh, of it. So it's a bit safer. Now, of course, with that, the only the only thing here is there's going to be some kind of constraint. So if I was AFK, maybe in the center um, and depending on how far away um, the, the player can be. So if it's um, I think it's 16 blocks for mobs. I'm not sure if blocks are different. Um, I think they might be, uh, but that would just be so if they were 16 blocks as well, then it would be 16 blocks that way, 16 that way. So you could have a flying machine move 32 blocks as long as you're AFK in the center and it would still keep running and as soon as you moved away then it would automatically stop so I thought that was pretty cool that could be that could be actually quite useful all right so what else have we got to show you one thing I did try was to see if we could use this in a mob farm. So maybe put these down and detect when mobs would spawn. But there is a flaw with that. And that is that the mobs uh, will only make a noise if you're within 16 blocks of them. And of course, they won't spawn uh, unless you're 24 blocks or more away from them. So I don't think this is going to be too useful for mob farms. Um, but if you've got a good idea, then let me know. Now, what I'm after in the comments is all your great ideas. I know how smart you lot are. And I'm sure somebody has already come up with some really good ideas uh, for stuff we could experiment with. So I just had a little bit of time. Uh, today to play around with this 
So I thought I'd uh, make this sort of kind of first video and then uh, yeah, show you it, show you it in action and hopefully maybe uh, aspired some, some ideas. So get in the comments if you've got an idea of some things we could try out and maybe I'll make a follow up video if there's some good suggestions. So I hope that was uh, that was interesting. So if you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, then get in that comment section. All right, my geeks, until next time, I will see you later.